Now, I'm going to briefly respond to the assignments yesterday. This is about how to motivate people to pray and to serve God. And as I said yesterday, the most important motivation according to the Bible should be the grace of God. That in order to motivate people to pray, it's because God has, God really loves us. He has all kinds of blessings planned for our life. You know, in God's heart, it's always blessing people. So when He looks at you, He always cares about you and He wants to bless us. So when we pray, the moment God sees us pray with a sincere heart, God is very happy and He will for sure respond. Now this is how I motivate people. With the grace of God, this is as Jesus has said, before you pray, the Father already knows your need. So He knows your needs and He has a plan, a wonderful plan in life. So He wants to do something for us. He wants to bless, bless us. The moment we pray to Him, He's very happy and He'll pour the blessings upon us. That's why you start with the blessings, the love of God, and then when we pray, we open our heart to the blessings and then God will, can continue to bless our life. And also to motivate us to serve God, that is God sees our life. When God sees a person who, uh, who is willing to serve God and bless people, like uh, Jesus said, even if you give a cup of cold water to a little one, by no means you lose the reward. So. God is very happy to see anyone serve God. If anyone serves God with a sincere heart, even a small, a small thing they do, just to give a cup of cold water, the Lord is very happy and He is for sure to bless us. So this is the grace that He is happy with people who want to serve God. So the moment we serve God, He sees our heart and He'll come to be with us and He'll bless us and He he make the plan fulfilled in our life. So this is how we motivate people. Only when people disobey, keep disobeying, and then we can have warning. Because the Bible does say, you know, if the branch does not abide in the tree, in the vine, it can be dried up, and then it will be thrown into fire. So that's the last warning for people who don't pray, that if people don't pray, that means there's something wrong in the relationship with God. And then the second thing is, for people who don't serve God in Matthew 25, that if they hide the, the talents, bury the talents, then they'll be thrown into the outer darkness where they will gnash the teeth. And also for uh, the ones who do not do the little, good things to the little ones, they can be thrown into eternal punishment. So these are the motivation by the law. But usually people don't obey by the motivation by the law. Usually they respond to God by the motivation of grace. The reason why I want to say this is because one of the assignment, one of the assignment that I saw here, the answer here is to motivate people Um, some of the assignment here, does, uh, what was written was this one here. Okay, now here is one that the motivation is from the law, telling people what to do. Let's listen to this. How to motivate people to pray and serve God. The Bible says, in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, the one thing required of such servants is that they are faithful to the Master, believing God and His promises, obeying God's word and trusting God's promises, experience God's love, enjoy God's love, and now, he put enjoying God's love at the, uh, later. It should be God's love for us first. He has blessings planned for us first before we say uh, that, you know, God wants us to, uh, that, now here, 
first you start with one thing required of such servants is that they are faithful to the master and then believing God and his promises, obeying God's word. So this word should be put after the grace. You understand? So if we start with, okay, as Christians, you should all love God and obey God and read the Bible and serve God. It's true. But it doesn't serve, it doesn't motivate them. For instance, if you just tell people, okay, you are, you are now married, you should love your wife and husband and you should serve the, him or her, you should help him and her, and you keep telling, you should obey. For instance, if you counsel two persons, a couple, and then they are not forgiving each other, and then you say, okay, go home and forgive each other, pray for each other, pray together, and they were fighting. They were fighting. Yeah. And then you tell them, go home and forgive and then be nice to each other. Do you think they will go home and do it? They won't because they're not motivated to do it. We need the motivation first before we can do it. The motivation came from God loves you and He has a wonderful plan in your life. And then when you love your husband and wife, when God sees your love for your husband and wife, God is very happy. And He'll reward you and He'll bless your life and bless your marriage. Do you want your marriage to be blessed? If you want your marriage to be blessed, you treasure your marriage, you treasure your husband and wife, and you pray for him or her so that they'll be blessed, so that the marriage will be blessed, and you find ways to do nice things to him or her. Have did you notice how I do it? Yes. Instead of just saying, go home and forgive and be nice. It's just telling them what to do. We don't just tell people what to do, but we tell them the reasons behind that. It's because God's grace, God's love for us, He really wants to bless us. And then when God sees that we love our family, love our husband and wife, God is very happy and He'll bless your whole life. Do you want your whole life to be blessed? God, you know, sees our heart and our, our action. When He sees that we have a good heart and good action, God is very happy to bless us. Do you notice this difference? First with the grace of God to motivate people. So please start with the grace of God related to that area and then, and then go into what we can do. Okay? So if you have not done that, you can take back your assignment sheet and then correct it and <laughs> give it to me again because uh, we'll see, uh, you know, I want everyone to, to pass. Yes. I want everyone to pass, okay? Yes. Yes. Tell the person. We want everyone pass. We want everyone pass. You can pass. You can pass. So, now this is grace, right? This is grace. I'm not saying, I want to fail many people. I don't say that. I want many people pass. And you have a good certificate. So this is our grace. And that way will motivate you, right? Yeah. So you can write a new one if you find that you haven't put in the grace to motivate, and then you can uh, do it again, and then I will accept it. It's okay, you know, after I tell you the answer. Any question? Any question? Because, for instance, for me, I don't serve God because I say, if I don't serve God, God will beat me up. If I don't serve God, God will punish me. If I do that, it's like, oh, I have to do it. If not, God will punish me. Oh, I have to do it. It will be like the slaves that were taken to America, right? Yeah. They have to do the, all the things, and they did not do it with a happy heart. But if they say, my master is nice to me, any good thing I do, the master blesses me and gives me all kinds of blessings, that way he has motivation, right? So, so I hope that this morning you have the motivation to come because God is good. God has all kinds of blessings. If I understand God's grace, I can enjoy God's love and I and can enjoy serving God. And God remember all this and I will receive rewards in this life and in the future. Although I don't look for the rewards. I, my motivation actually has gone a higher level. My motivation is what? Actually, God has put His heart in me now. When I see people, I just want to bless them. I just have the motivation born from God. When I see people, I just want to bless them, help them. It's not because of 
I have to do it because I have the heart to bless that God has given me so much motivation because I see God is so good I have so much motivation whenever I see people I want to bless them so I hope that it happens to you too that in your heart you say God is so good I enjoy God so I want to bless people that way you have a continual motivation no matter how difficult it is even when one day we are persecuted we still have the motivation to serve God and say God remembers all this and if I'm persecuted for God God remembers that much more and he would really be pleased with my life and he'll bless my life and and we experience something more we can experience more when we are persecuted we can experience God speaking to us more and more miracles